Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today guys we are going to be diving down into the charts to take a look at quite a bit of data for Bitcoin. What has been going on with the market leader and what could we expect to happen next here in the crypto space. Now as we get into this video if you do find it useful and informative hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel then why not go ahead and subscribe. Tap the bell, select all notifications and in doing so you are going to be kept up to date with all of the videos that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Right, with all of that said, done out the way, let's jump on down into uh, you know, the data for Bitcoin here and take a look at what is going on and what I think is likely to happen next. Okay, guys, we're going to start with the hourly chart. And what we're going to do is we're going to review what's been going on with this kind of sideways trade over the weekend so far and what this might mean for next week, right? So um, here we can obviously see that we had a really good impulsive move to the upside. Okay, we were expecting the fourth wave pullback. We've seen that we actually pushed up a little bit higher than the third wave high. Now, I'm looking at this data here. And I'm trying to make sense of what is going on, right? So we obviously have uh, a wave one, wave two, wave three. Maybe there is some kind of fourth wave here with a push um, you know, for a fifth wave. I'm not entirely certain on a lot of this, but it's very, very choppy, right? It's not... Um, it's not definitive of one particular move, right? So you actually have quite a long kind of sideways trade here. Now, the target for this hasn't moved. It hasn't altered. It hasn't been invalidated. Um, and this is the 618, the 1.618 move of this fourth wave from high to low. Okay, so as we pull this down, we can see here this comes in at 41,181. That hasn't changed. Now, we could argue that maybe there's some kind of um, third wave high actually up here um, at the top. That would actually then increase our target towards $42,000, which would be a major resistance block. Okay, so I'm going to be conservative on this. I'm going to lower this down to this point here, say 41180 one or whatever it was get that on the nose there um so that's kind of what we're going on now when we actually take a look at these candles and these patterns that are forming on here uh, we can of course acknowledge that there is some kind of abc move uh, directly down here very very rapid okay this gets us to the bottom then we have um, another corrective move again pushing up a b and c this would always kind of follow what has been going on uh, with an abc down if you see abc down the minimum requirement would be an abc up um, now here we can obviously see there's another you know, abc to the downside again it follows the same pattern when you have an abc up you will follow by an abc down minimum now obviously we have another push up here now this whole entire move eventually gets us to this end goal um, and we can articulate this simply as an abc as well and um, but for the most part we can prevent ourselves drawing so many wave counts and actually just roll all of that up into um one decent move uh, so if i actually remove all of these abcs i'll leave that first one in and um, but we can actually see here as we, we can just go, this is A, this is B, this is C, right? Um, and it encompasses ABC up, ABC down, and ABC up, right? So rather than drawing nine waves, we can just draw three waves. It gets us to the same result. Now, we have a very clear move to the downside as well. This is ABC, um, ABC down, okay? So we have ABC up, ABC down. And um, so basically, two corrective patterns side by side. And you can articulate this in lots of different ways, but it's pretty much uh, a not say a standard play this is not what you would expect to see for the fifth wave you'd expect to see five and um, clear waves up right so this is very very choppy this is very undecided market and um, but the minimum requirement for that fifth wave is still 1.618 and it has not been hit yet and we haven't invalidated this by dropping down lower than if i get this right for you guys 35,180 right so we know it this is still valid until we drop down lower than there, and that is the minimum requirement for a fifth wave. So this sideways trade is something that is quite frustrating to kind of see, but it is something that we're very, very conscious uh, about. Now, here we are on our current A wave higher, okay? So this is A wave, we look for a B wave down, and then we look to push up higher. Now this, when we measure the distance of our A wave, if I grab hold of the fib levels um, and we've run this down uh, and we start thinking about where we might retrace to, you know, how high is this likely to go? Is it going to go impulsive and all of that kind of good stuff? So if we just retrace down to a level of support, this effectively would be about 38,900. Um, if we were to retrace to that point, and what are we currently trading at? 39,000. Uh, 600. So this line here, sorry, is 38,900. So if we were to just drop down a little bit, <clears throat> which we can kind of see just here occurring right now. That means that we're getting a push towards 40,600 and it's possible that we actually go up 
um, just up to that 1.618 with a wick, um, not going past the 1.382, and we can call it a day on the fifth wave. Okay, so I'm interested to see how that one plays out. Um, but on the shorter time frame, that's kind of what we're looking at. A lot of kind of very choppy moves going sideways. All the waves are uh, basically indicating that we wipe out the stochastic RSI and we continue going sideways here. Now, the thing with the, these kind of patterns, these sideways trades, is they are known as continuation patterns. They're a continuation of the trend that led into them. Okay, so what we have is we have a trend up, okay, this impulsive move up. The continuation which is a sideways trade and then obviously the continuation from there is up so we are still looking at hitting our 1.618 uh, 1 target for this and um, then there's no reason why that wouldn't happen just yet now i'm going to remove um some of these and then i'm going to roll it up into a four hourly chart um yeah let me just grab hold of the four hourly now the four hourly had come down on the stochastic rsi quite nicely right so the four hourly chart actually is allowing us to see this kind of growth um, up towards our 1.618 okay um so there's no reason for that now obviously here on our um on our uh, four hourly chart in fact we can see a, a more kind of definitive kind of move right we have um you know we had that abc down and we can talk about that quite a bit but um we actually have here is you know, a pretty good kind of ABC up with an ABC down. Very, very clear to see that on the four hourly chart and we're starting another one. Um, but if we roll this up into something larger like a four hourly chart, what becomes clearer, or an eight hourly chart I should say, is that all of this might just be A, this be the B wave lower, and then eventually we hit that 1.618. Okay, and if we take that perspective, let me just remove some of these fibs off of here to make that a little bit clearer. Um, if we take this... Um, measurement of our a wave right from the high point to the low point i'll just make sure i get that uh pretty much exactly where it needs to be it's a little bit short but that'll give us a conservative target and um, here we can see that again we're moving up right into that range of about forty thousand six hundred. so very much aligned to an abc this side is the abc the uh, sideways trading and um, so it could just be that which we haven't actually effectively ended this fourth wave just yet and we are still looking to progression to the upside now there are a couple of concerns with that however right i'm going to just quickly remove this one off of here um the the obvious concerns that we're going to have are going to be that we have um stochastic rsis on our eight hourly chart that is over Oh, right so we need to see some form of corrective action and when we take a look at this high point we can actually say that this might be a b and a seed to come down lower so there's always two sides to every story um, and here what we have is a potentially uh, a, a move down towards if i move that over there so we can see the numbers thirty-seven thousand seven hundred. now i've been calling out for an abc correction um, to actually take us down towards thirty-seven thousand five hundred. so that's very much aligned at the moment to that thinking um, but obviously i am very aware that we haven't hit our minimum target for our fifth wave so there's two sides to this one we're either going to come down and um, quite significantly before moving on up and our abc correction for our um our fifth wave actually or a fourth wave correction hasn't actually finished and um, the third wave might actually be this move just here and if i actually move this over for a second uh, and actually just bring down our chart here and expand it a little bit and um, you can see that we have effectively a pretty good move to the upside this could quite easily and comfortably be our third wave high and what we could be looking at is a fourth wave going down lower and again not invalidating any moves because we haven't gone down lower than that uh, that first wave high and um, so really important that we are aware of potentially you know a deeper correction on a fourth wave and then a really good strong push up on the larger time frames this would allow us to correct our stochastic rsi on the eight hourly now um, both scenarios are very possible, so we want to be open-minded that we might pull back before surging on up. Um, but I do think the probability is actually that we are more than likely going to be pushing up before we have a significant pullback towards that 37,500 range. Um, so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that 1.618 to get hit. Um, but I am very aware that the stochastic RSI on the 8 hourly chart does need a correction the hourly needs a correction too but i think that's actually something that we could see potentially um 
fare pretty well because the volumes are reasonably low at the moment we aren't looking at anything too bad there um, and the four hourly is also seeing you know a decline in volume um, so uh, right now I don't think we're going to see a huge sell-off if it happens today however um, what we're well I guess what I really want to see is um, hit the 1.618 today so that tomorrow we can actually have a healthy ABC correction and um, without creating a lot of panic because it is something that I would expect to happen once we actually push up to the 1.618 um, and again 37,500 is the target on that but you know at the moment that's just me speculating on what I think would be a nice healthy retracement level um, and again you know would actually review the 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 wave counts closer to the time and um, so for Bitcoin right now um, I am expecting a pullback on the hourly um, but I am also looking for a surge up towards that $40,000 range um, and I want to see that 1.618 get hit at uh, $41,000 um, but I am aware that there is the possibility um, and it is a pretty high possibility I'm not going to kind of sugarcoat it it's a high possibility uh, or it's a high possibility of coming down to the forty-seven thousand, uh, sorry, thirty-seven thousand dollar range, and um, before we even move up into that fifth wave higher, um, but I think the there's a higher probability of moving up before we come down, um, but both are um, pretty up there as possibilities. So we have to be very open-minded to both scenarios. Um, we're either going to get an opportunity to accumulate before a push higher, or we are going to be um, pushing up higher and then looking for an ABC correction for more accumulation. Now. As I come up into our weekly chart, I will highlight um, a few things. Okay, so on our weekly chart, let me just grab hold of that and move that off the way there for a second. We have had a really decent pullback here. Okay, and um, we are seeing accumulation happen, and I'll bring up some data on that in a second. So we've had a 52% pullback um, from the peak to the bottom here. And again, you know, that's the, the $32,000 lows. Uh, from the highs that we had back in April, May, uh, down to the lows that we had in June was 55%. And I know a lot of people were calling this a bear market, but we still went up and set a new all time high all of this here all of this action right inside here is corrective action it's not a trend setter um, it's not actually showing us a trend to the downside it doesn't indicate a bear market and um, so we want to kind of just really make sure we are very aware of what is going on there uh, with that um, we've actually seen 1,700% in gains on uh, Bitcoin since the crashes in March 2020 um, which is you know really poor considering um, you know many other assets in the space have seriously you know performed in terms of 10,000 or so percent um you know cardano harmony one v chain uh, matic you know anco etc right um ethereum has also performed reasonably poorly um still better than some assets though uh so i think polka dot and algorand are even behind ethereum at this point uh, even xrp is behind ethereum at this point um but ethereum was only 5600 percent whereas some of these other altcoins like harmony one for example 32,000 percent v chain uh, right up here at uh, 17,000 percent um etc right so um bitcoin i just want to kind of highlight we still have room to grow um from here uh, the minimum re kind of requirement if we were to just go from uh the current price which is about here if i actually grab hold of the percentage thing uh, and make sure i can actually grab hold of the price so the current price um if I take that from here um, up to our minimum kind of requirement here of the 1.618, that being $107,000, it effectively is a one point, yeah, yeah, it's 100 and, yeah, 117, uh, sorry, 170% approximately, right? So it's not, um, it's not going to be a huge driver um, for your portfolio. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely you know, something that you want to have exposure to and um, to protect wealth uh, but again do remember it's a volatile asset and um, it's not going to be protecting you in a bear market or anything like that um, but obviously you know it's a slightly safer environment some people might articulate but for me personally I, I do own Bitcoin and um, but I'm not a heavy investor in it because I do see value elsewhere and um, so with that being said though I, I do think we are likely to see this push up into new all-time highs and I do expect um, the rest of the crypto space to follow the trend that Bitcoin is setting which is kind of the point of the videos that I've been doing on Bitcoin at the moment is to kind of let you know that the market conditions uh, and what is going on that is affecting everything, right? Everything from Harmony One through to V Chain through to um, you know Anchor, Chainlink, you know, pretty much most other altcoins. There's a few exceptions here and there, but for the most part, they are being set or the trend is being set by Bitcoin.
So we do these Bitcoin videos to help us understand what the trends are for the overall market, um, not because we're investing in Bitcoin per se. Okay, so uh, obviously the stochastic RSI on this weekly chart is right down at the rock bottom area. And um, so what does this mean? Well, every time we've been down at the rock bottom area here um, in the last couple of years, I'm just going to go back for the last couple of years, guys, uh, we can see what's happened afterwards, right? And there's a couple of exceptions right in here, and I'll talk about that as well, and then obviously this one right so what we do is we can actually just take this data and we can actually reflect on what is going on right so uh, right now um well let's actually break this down to the very beginning the uh, end of the bear market december 2018 believe it or not uh, many people might not think that but that's exactly where bitcoin actually broke out of the bear market okay so here we were heavily oversold at the time there were a couple of examples uh, a little bit beforehand where we were oversold and we had small pushes up and then we just continued to go down, right? This is kind of the worry that people seem to be having. Um, but for the most part, when we're in this bull cycle and we're in the bull run, uh, we have an oversold stochastic RSI right at the bottom. We surge up, we can become overbought. Okay, um, from the overbought area, we come back down. In fact, there's actually a blip right in the middle here where we're oversold. We actually move up and then we pull back down. And this is all about the pandemic at the time, March 2020 crash. Then we push up and again, right here, we actually wipe that stochastic RSI out from overbought to oversold and we continue the run up. Then we pull down in May and June, June lows, right? We're heavily oversold and we have another surge to the upside and set a new all-time high. Right now, we're in the oversold area. And this is a nice low point that's not as low as we were in back in June. So what's the probability of what's going to happen next? Well, we're, we're going to have a surge up, right? Uh, obviously, this is a weekly chart, so it takes several weeks to months to play out. But what you end up with is a surge to the upside. Now, the percentage surge is the only thing that's a variable here that might change, right? So when we're oversold, we have a push up here of about 47%, right? And then we come back down to the oversold area. OK, um, this one over here, the beginning of the actual bull run, if you will, um, we surged up from the uh, oversold area um, by 338%. OK, and um, then we're down at the bottom here. There's a small push, a really small one. This one, this is basically when the pandemic started from the lows up to the top. There was about 43%. Then we crash down into the lows of March. We push up into the next overbought area. That was a 232% move. We then pull back down into the oversold area, and then we continue this surge all the way up. Uh, this one was a 300% move. We then actually start to continue to actually grow to the upside whilst we're correcting, which is a really good encouraging sign. Um, and then we pull back down and we just basically stay in this low point. Then, of course, um, from these lows of June, uh, as we go up from the oversold area to the overbought area, set the all-time high was 144% move. Okay, so what we have is basically a good strong movement to the upside. Um, you know, we've got a couple of instances here uh, in this example where the move up has only been about 40%, 47%, 43%. Um, but we've got quite a few instances where we've been this heavily oversold and we've actually moved up 330%, 230%, 300%, 144%, right? Um, so this is where we are, right? Selling now seems a bit foolish because we are looking for that bump to the upside. We've got to take this weekly stochastic RSI from its oversold position to its overbought position, or at least take it out of this oversold area in a reasonable way, like we saw back here in July of 2018. Right. Um, so this is what we're looking at. Now we can obviously go a little bit deeper. Now it appears that Glassnode is having a little bit of trouble with the exchanges. They seem to be not being able to anchor in exactly the right amount of data for Bitcoin. And it's an interesting kind of take. Why is this? I do not know. Um, but the data has changed on me again today. I've posted in our Discord server a couple of different numbers over the last couple of days for the amount of Bitcoin coming in and going out of exchanges. The number keeps changing. And this is for historical old data. So what is going on? I'm not entirely certain as to why Glassnode seems to be struggling to get accurate data from exchanges. But I do want to kind of highlight a couple of things. One, we've been in a serious amount of accumulation here and um, pretty much since the 20th. 23rd of January 2022. We've been seeing nothing but Bitcoin leaving exchanges. Now, as I did my screenshot this morning, Glassnode told me that 50,000 Bitcoin more left exchanges than went on yesterday. However, what has actually happened now uh, since the latest update is it's actually telling me that we've actually seen um, more Bitcoin 
go on to exchanges than has actually left. Um, so as of yesterday, apparently 12,000 Bitcoin more or more 12,000 more Bitcoin went on to exchanges than went off exchanges. This is the first time in over one month that we've actually seen more Bitcoin go to exchanges than leave exchanges. So interesting kind of take. There's lots of kind of reasons for that. We'll speculate on that as, as you want to. Um, but there is something else that you should be very aware about this particular report. And I really do like it. Um, obviously, during massive um, impacts on price volatility, specifically to the downside and um, you usually would expect to see a lot of volume go to the exchanges where people decide to panic sell their bitcoin um, and this is may 2021 and we saw significant spikes in bitcoin going on to exchanges on average this is probably around if i get a nice average low point i'm going to take this one here um to be kind i'm going to say on average 75,000 bitcoin more uh, went on to exchanges and left exchanges during that time of volatility on the most part though um we've actually seen a lot more bitcoin leave exchanges in total right and this is the kind of accumulation that's been going on in 20 or late 2021 early 20 22. Now let's reflect what does a bear market look like and what does a bull market look like in terms of uh, Bitcoin going on and off of exchanges. Let's just roll this back to 2018. Now here we can see what happened in 2018 during mass sell-offs and the bear market. Can you tell me what looks like a bull run and what looks like a bear market? And because right now we haven't seen anywhere near the same kind of levels of Bitcoin sell-offs that have happened during a, the initial stages of a bear market the closest we've had is may 2021 and even that was not a bear market right so um, i think it's important that we understand that there's a little bit of volatility it can scare people but for the most part what we've actually been seeing here is a huge amount of accumulation occurring and not so much a selling off scenario. And the other thing I want to kind of bring out, guys, is the balance of Bitcoin on exchanges. I spoke about this um, in our Discord server as well. So if you're not already down there, go ahead and check it out. Uh, links in the description. The balance of Bitcoin on exchanges hasn't been this low since November 2000 and 18. Um, so this is actually really encouraging because what does this actually mean? Well, it means that um, there's a huge supply shock to the system here with Bitcoin. Um, and basically, all you really now need to see is demand for BTC. Once we have the demand for Bitcoin, and um, what we're actually going to find is a huge shock that there isn't enough supply to fit that demand. And as a result, the price will spike. It has absolutely nothing to do with market capitalization. Market capitalization is nothing more than a mere calculation on the current sold price. Or in fact, it's the very last sold price multiplied by the circulating supply. It has no impact on the amount of money flowing in or anything like that. The thing that you want to be really focusing in on in order to actually determine whether or not the price is going to move up and move down is the supply of Bitcoin and the demand for Bitcoin. And um, so right now the supply is being shocked. We've seen that over a month of accumulation and, and there was a several months beforehand too. So there's a lot of Bitcoin actually coming off of the exchanges. Now, if we just reflect on where this was uh, back in March of 2020, right? So the pandemic hit, the entire financial system was shocked. Um, there was huge sell-offs, right? Um, and, you know, the number of Bitcoin on exchanges at the time had reached its peak, right? So that is kind of the worst case scenario for Bitcoin. Um, and then you start to see serious accumulation thereafter. And we've been nothing but declining until we got to April of 2021. We had a small bump to the upside. You can see that in the volume change within the, the, the amount of Bitcoin going in and going out of exchanges. And we've come right back down to the rock bottom here. Um, so these are really encouraging data. I actually said November, but we actually touched the same level um, back here in April as well, right? So this is a really encouraging piece of data to actually help us understand, you know, What's actually going on with the exchanges? The supply of Bitcoin to retail investors is a huge driver, okay, for price discovery. And the fact that that is being shocked, it should give us a lot of encouragement for what is to come. As I've seen, I said, we are in a heavy area of oversold position, not just on our daily, also on the weekly, uh, sorry, on the monthly, the weekly, the daily, right? These are all in really good positions. There's some small volatility occurring on the smaller timeframes like the hourly, the four hourly and the eight hourly. But for the most part, what we're actually looking at is 
a really good position and a really good push to the upside that is due here for Bitcoin. And consequently, guys, because that is going to happen to Bitcoin, I do firmly believe that the trend is going to be set for the altcoins as well. And the altcoins are going to seriously surge to the upside alongside what happens to Bitcoin. So guys, I'm going to leave this video there. If you have found it useful and informative, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then do go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications. And in doing so, you are going to be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. With all that said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one.